How's it going guys? It's me again with another tank review. This time it's going to be the OBS Engine 2 RTA. So I'm going to do my usual thing instead of yammering on about it too much up, you know, this top face on view here. We're going to take a little dive down, take a little closer look at the features of the deck, the airflow, everything like that. Then we're going to bring it back up, vape on it, and I'm going to tell you all of my thoughts. See you down there. So welcome to the up and close angle. Uh, this is going to be my first time looking at an OBS product. So my views on this are going to be just as a standard tank. I haven't used the original engine, so I do apologize. Shoot me for not using it, whatever. But yeah, this is the box that it's going to come in. The box is subject to change. As you know, I get sent these for the purpose of the review. So this is straight from the factory. So here we have the tank here, OBS logo at the top, and down the bottom, this product contains nicotine, which is a highly addictive substance. A liquid containing nicotine provided separately. Of course it is. Uh, on the side we've got Engine 2 RTA, down the bottom there we have some hyperlinks there, you know, that little QR app. You scan on those and it'll take you to their Insta and their Facebook. On the back here we got more of the same warning there, and some features on the top. I've got the stainless, as you can see it comes in a variety of other colours. Feel free to take a little pause there, have a look at the info. And on the side here, we have Engine 2 RTA again. Flip it over and we have the little uh, scratch me code for the authenticity check. On the bottom, there's nothing. On the top, there's nothing. So, without taking a look at nothing too much longer, this is the internal box. So you get your nice little shiny OBS logo on the front there again. Get a little pulley tab there. Nothing on the bottom, nothing on the top nothing on the back let's open it up so usually this would be where your tank would be as you can see there is a little indent in there but it's not in there because I took it out so we're gonna have a look on the inside of this box this is another thing that comes inside the box apart from your usual keep fresh little balls of fun there put them to the side they're not needed open this up so on the inside of this you get your spare glass, which is a necessity for any tank. Some O-rings, some clear ones and some black ones. I hate the clear ones because they end up looking like they're really dirty because the nicotine containing e-liquid will dye these eventually. But, you know, that's only a negative for the uh, little rubbers that come in there. A couple screws in there as well for your deck because we all know how easy it is to cross-thread these buggers. The obligatory pack of Muji cotton. A little atomizer user attention. Genuine taste with intention motion. <laughs> so feel free to have a pause and uh, a read of that information there. Flip it over. A couple more codes on there that you can scan on your phone's QR app. Or you could just type them into your browser there. You get a little baby blue Phillips head screwdriver. Which isn't amazing I must admit. And of course you get a user manual, which has all sorts of different languages on the inside and plenty of easy to see diagrams, little picture things there, how to fill, coil and wick your device. And there it is all exploded into separate little pieces. So here we have the object of interest itself. This is the OBS Engine 2 RTA, the first OBS product I have used. On top comes a nifty little acrylic 510 drip tip in quite an odd shape but it sits nicely on top of the tank. No complaints about it whatsoever, it's really comfy. Held in place by a couple small o-rings there. They are quite small so on occasions I did find if they did get a little bit of juice on there it did tend to come out a lot easier so probably would find the drip tip coming off in my mouth which looks a bit daft, but yeah, a couple thicker O-rings would have been a little bit better. Got your chamber done there. Your airflow on the top here does spin 
all the way around so some people that might be a con I'm not really that bothered by it because it's spinning all the way around no, it just doesn't bother me on this one for some reason because it's not it's not going anywhere it's all fixed into this part here anyway so if we look for where is it little arrow tiny little arrow there that will be where your filling slot is situated I have lined up the OBS logo above it because it does make that little tiny arrow a lot easier to find because for those that don't have the best eyesight like myself it might be a little bit difficult to find on occasion so we lift this up and there we go there's your uh, filling hole there generously sized as well so no problems with pipettes or really any form of bottle apart from those little screw top black ones I Ooh, trying to think of what company might still use them. The, the Yorkshire Vapors older bottles, the older older bottles on the originals, they might be a little bit more of a pain to get in here because they're a little bit thicker on the top, but you'll find a way around it just to count it into another bottle. Uh, this does spin around, so you can have the OBS logo anywhere. Doesn't have to be just above the filling hole, just makes it a lot easier to find that filling slot there. And here we have the bottom there. Sorry, it's a little bit shiny, so the light's reflecting from the window there. So, we have designed by OBS at the top here. you probably faintly be able to see it. And then OBS Engine 2 on the bottom there. And then OBS and some kind of serial number and batch letter by what it seems on the bottom there. It's not a Sprung 510. It's not popping out all too much so I'd advise trying not to use this on a mech just to keep it safe you know so for a little size thing this is 56 millimeters in height and 26 millimeters in diameter and this has a 5 milliliter capacity tank uh, the euro version will probably have a TBD compliant or slightly smaller tank with a uh, little filling on the inside there and she's made out of beautiful food grade 304 stainless steel, hence the shininess. So the deterioration of the material is nigh on going to be impossible. So let's take her apart, have a look on the inside. So if you see any juice residue, I do apologise, I did give it a quick clean. So this is the build deck itself, it's a little more unconventional than usual decks you were used to seeing. So what we have here instead of putting your coils and situating them on top of the deck as you would usually see you kind of build it almost upside down so you screw in one leg on this side and then situate your coil just above the airflow there so it's a bottom airflow so the airflow goes in the bottom here and then underneath your coil and upwards so pop that as close as you can to the airflow to get the best out of this tank and then you screw in the other side and do all of your adjustments then. These are the coils that actually came in the pack. And I'm not going to lie, I've put these for an absolute hammering. The stainless steel Claptons, to my knowledge, and I don't think they were machine made. I think these were handmade coils. They already came with the, what you call, goon bend. So I'm pretty impressed by the coils, to be honest. So yeah, there's a top view for you guys there. Try and get it to focus a little bit. You have your usual wicking holes on each side. The light is beaming off of this thing due to it being so shiny. So as you can see, on each side, you've got your wicking holes. One, two, and then turn it around. Three, four. And I've been told that that is pretty much exactly the same as the original engine as well. That hasn't changed at all. And it's got a slightly curved design on the bottom of the tank as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly wick her up. I'm going to pop back and put it all back together again. And there we go. She is all wicked up and ready to go. So let's prime her up with some juicy juice. Today I'm going to be using some of that Bubblegum Millions by IVG Sweets. Well, it's by IVG, but it's a sweet range. They've got many ranges. This is an award-winning juice as well. They won, um, I think it was Best Sweet Juice or something at Expo this year.
So she is all juicy. Now we just got to assemble it back together. Now, one thing I forgot to show you about the design of the top here. If you can see on the inside, there's these little slots. They line up with the slots just here. If you can see them, they're on both sides. One a bit too high there, yeah, and another one there. Just on the inside of the deck, or oh, underside of the deck there. Those co align with these parts here. And what that is, is that just slots all of your airflow and juice control in place. And it just lines up perfectly. If I can get this right first time. There you go. You just hear that little click and it clicks itself into place. Tighten it all up. And there you go. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to find that little arrow again. See what I mean? It's really hard to actually find. There it is. As I say, it appears. <laughs> and I'm going to pop some juice on the inside of there as well. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Every day, once a day, give yourself a present. Don't and there we go, folks. Nice and full up. Shut that off. Any juice around the outside of the cap? No! We're all good. So, let's take you back up to the top, have a vape on it, and I'll tell you all of my thoughts about this cheeky little number. And welcome back up to the top view peeps. That was my up close and personal look with the OBS Engine 2 RTA. Like I said at the very beginning, I haven't used an OBS product before. I know, I know it's pretty bad of me to be honest, but I just haven't, so shoot me if you will. This, I've, I've pretty much just reviewed it on a normal tank basis, having known that I haven't used any of the previous models of the engine before, because I know they released a mini and a normal sized one as well. That's about as far as I know about it. There isn't really many pros and cons to cover on this, to be honest. I haven't really found too many cons, which is kind of unusual these days, because there's usually fault with everything, but I can't really find too many. I have a couple though. For someone with OCD like myself, it might annoy you if I get up and show you here that that arrow there doesn't line up central with the airflow. I, I don't know why it annoys me so much, but it would make more sense if that arrow was just in the middle there. It, it would just cure the OCD factor a little bit for me. Being the fact that it's 26 millimeters may be a bit of a con to some of you as well. It just means a lot of devices these days well, some devices still don't have the old central pin in the middle like this one does. Um, so it'll be like the RX, the Minikin, stuff like that. It might not sit on the front flush, although it may because of that slightly canicular design there. Slightly cones down. It may fit, it may overhang a little bit. But you, you, you'll just have to buy it and find out really. So that's another slight, well, might be a con, might not be. Apart from that, to be honest, the rest is just pros. Um, it looks really, really fucking nice. That drip tip's really nice as well. Even though I found it a little bit odd when I pulled it open that it was a 510, that it just made me chuckle slightly because it looks like it's gonna be one of the 810 Goon Kennedy style drip tips. It's not, it's a 510. And it, I, for some reason it just made me chuckle because that looks thick as fuck take it apart, little tiny entrance there. But I think it helps with the flavor having a 510 wide bore drip tip because the flavor is absolutely fantastic in this. I taste every element of any juice that I've put into it, whether that be custards, sweets, any other dessert flavors. It's just been an absolute joy to vape and it's really nice to actually taste all of those flavors and they just, they just pop out in this tank. But even though I've mentioned flavour, cloud production is still a major thing on this. With top airflow, you wouldn't usually consider it to be a massive cloud chasing sort of tank. But I've got this on 90 watts and it's a 0.2 ohm coil. But these are the stock coils, these are the ones that you fit in there yourself. They do come in one of those little packages that I've shown you up close. So here you go, 90 watts. It absolutely chucks. And to be fair, even if I turn it down, 
we're down to 65. It's a 65 watts there, I've put it down to now. It's, it's just such a nice tank. I don't know why I haven't used an engine tank before. Only other little problem some of the newer to building people might find is that slightly unconventional build deck where you have to build it upside down. But please believe me, uh, I thought it would be awkward myself when I first took it apart. I, I shat myself, basically, because I thought I was going to have a difficult time. I just didn't think I was going to get along with it at all. But upon actually trying to build on it, I discovered that it was really quite easy to build on once you get your head around that you're building upside down. But it's just a learning process sort of thing. It's getting that thing in your head just to know that it isn't actually as difficult as it is. And believe me, I find it difficult to build on awkward decks. Not this. So, price point for you. I'm going to look to the side there. I got this sent to me from Heaven Gifts for the purpose of this review. So, it was priced up there when I last looked at 36 USD 90 and that comes in at about £27.99 in our money over here in the UK and anywhere else that uses the Great British Currency. But I also found it on eSig1 at £25.99. So price wise, this is really fucking good and it covers all grounds. It's not too expensive and it's, it's not too cheap and it's really well made. You can honestly tell the amount of effort and thought that went into this tank is it's just brilliant. I don't have many faults about it. You've heard all the faults I had. That, that's all I can say really. If you have that money in your pocket and you're thinking I need a new RTA or I'm going to try and get into building on uh, an RTA instead of getting stock coils that cost me an absolute ton, honestly please invest your money in the engine too. It's honestly not as hard as it looks. And I guarantee when you get used to it and you get building onto it, you'll you'll reap the benefits of it. I've had no leakage problems from this either. That's another big, big plus. But yeah, out of 10, I'm gonna rate this a solid nine. Apart from those little incy bits that I obviously told you that were cons, but not really cons, that's the only thing that bumps it down to a nine. If it wasn't those little things that just slightly chucked me off a little bit, it would be a 10. It's, absolutely brilliant for lower wattage vapors or higher what the higher wattage vapors god got me tongue twisted there honestly please give it a go it'll be worth every penny anyway thank you to having gifts for sending me this for the purpose of this review stay tuned for the next review but for now that's me signing off vape safe keep it cloudy au revoir